It's time to talk sports. It's time for the show. When you hear this song on the radio, it's time to tune in. Better act fast. Let me get that part of Potograph Sports Talk Radio. Starting now. Let's go. What's up, everybody, and welcome to episode 162 of Let Me Get That Potograph. As always, my name is Drew, or the DH, and joining me, my awesome co-host, Mr. Scott Rappaport. What's up, dude? Oh, uh, dude, you know what? I'm still hurting, man. I am, too. <laughs> I know. I, I, You know what? I figured it out, that, that injury that's been nagging me for a couple weeks, it's a sports hernia. Ah, and my dumb ass is not supposed to be running or doing anything. And you know, and what? Then here I, you are refing 10. Here I am refing. Yeah. I ref one last night. You know why? Because I committed to it and we are so short staffed with referees. Yeah. That's like, so I'm, I'm beaten. I'm beaten up the pink. Oh, no, I, I, I get it in our, in our rec league right now. We're so shorthanded. Um, I, I coach a team. And I actually had to umpire last game. Yep. There you go. <laughs> It's it's absolutely insane. The money's great. I don't know why people. Yeah, are oh yeah, yeah. It's, it's crazy. So yeah, yeah. That that's it, man. But uh, I hear you. Yeah. Painkillers are awesome. <laughs> <laughs> this episode brought to you by Hydrocoding. No, uh, yeah, kind of. Um, but it's uh, but no, it's it's you know it's been a weird week. It's been a slow week. Not a lot of stuff going on. Oh no no absolutely I mean it it was it has been a quieter week in the hobby um, which we do have a jam packed show for you guys today because there despite it being a quiet week in the hobby there's still a ton going on um, a lot of record sales going on right now on some interesting people but we're gonna start off the show today Scott with uh, the never ending rumor that now has picked up steam again because a couple of YouTubers decided to this is this is what i think is funny decided to confirm that there is a rumor so they confirmed a rumor <laughs> that fanatics and panini are finally going to get together what we all think is going to happen what we've all discussed a million times and think is going to happen uh, the rumor is and i've talked to some people and it does seem like there has been some movement lately uh but from everything that we're hearing they're dotting the I's, crossing the T's, and Panini America, which this is important, Panini America will be sold to Fanatics, which is the card and memorabilia and stuff like that division. But the sticker division will remain with Panini. Well, but it's not really that big of a deal for the sticker division because they already lost. This is their final World Cup I know. for stickers. So they already lost that. There's and the product's already out. There's no point in, uh, you know, in fanatics buying that. I agree. Um, the stickers, though, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with Panini because stickers are and have been for a long time the majority of their revenue. The yeah. Cards were not. Cards are not their major major source of revenue. It's their sticker division. Um, now they make much more than just soccer, but Correct. it's going to be interesting losing that license and losing Panini America if that is the case and it does happen like it seems it's going to. It's going to be interesting to see how that affects Panini and what they do moving forward with stickers and what can they really do. But. Uh, this is a uh, the big haul for fanatics if they grab Panini, you know. Then they've got they've got the intellectual property for everything. But yep. that poses my biggest issue with all this is okay. You grab Panini, you have all these licenses now. Well, you got to figure out a product schedule because you can't put all these products out. You cannot no. do sixty some product because if you added up both of them and put all the products, if every release had every you know product that panini puts out you're looking at 80 some different types of products a year for every sport you can't yeah you just can't do that and so i don't know if chronicles is going to be a 200 <laughs> card set or are they going to rotate that intellectual property out every uh couple years to make sure they don't lose the rights to the name like you know what how are they going to or, gonna or they're going to phase out it? you know or they they phase out you know yeah. certain products that really aren't you know well, they have as, to 
as catchy. I can see them getting rid of Revolution. I can see them. I don't know if they want to get rid of Hoops, but yeah. uh, you know, Hoops is a little too iconic. I think they keep that because I think Tops. I think they're gonna want to keep the nostalgia factor, and yeah. it is a good low end entry. I mean, it is kind of like that low end entry release. But then you also have Don Russ, and then you have Tops now. So yeah. who, I, it's gonna be really interesting to see what they go after if they keep things like does mosaic turn back into a specialty like it was originally meant to be do they change up configurations because i mean it you're looking at the possibility of having tops chrome tops chrome sapphire prism optic optic uh contenders like all these different chromium sets of football baseball basketball and it's a little too flooded so yeah. in my opinion that's that's gonna way oversaturate the market and so when i see this i'm like hey that's great you know they they finally grabbed the last company that they needed you know panini now they have basically a monopoly and i think this benefits leaf tremendously as well but this is the straw that broke the camel's back they got it all but what are they going to do how is this going to play out product wise like and that's a that's a good question i mean we can only speculate as as to what they're gonna do and you know we kind of go through this is all speculation right but here's but there's there's some things that i love speculating about like what would i love to see now that you know all of those product lines are combined right i i really want to see the return of Tops Chrome football and Tops Chrome basketball. Oh, yes, 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 yeah. I, we need Super Fractors yeah. back in football. I also want to see a, an MLB licensed version of Panini Prism. Yeah. And National Treasures. Right. Um, you know, and even, even Immaculate, you know, would be a great MLB yeah. licensed product. No, the high end is where I think they can keep the products because they don't really have a massive, mass, you know, a ton on Tops' side of ultra high-end stuff you know what uh, i mean, I mean like, they've, they've got a couple but if you think about it panini's only got a you know i mean it's national treasures it's immaculate and it's flawless yeah they'll probably get rid of stuff like panini one-on-one in case stuff like that i would assume yep. being phased out or put together like i said maybe uh i would love and i've always said this and i wish it would happen optic contenders put optic contenders in optic put it as an optic yeah. super short print insert cut down the majority of all of those autos we don't need all of them and make it an insert line in optic that increases the value of optic tremendously no that's true but here's another thing that you know everybody's talking about like you know hey let's get tops chrome basketball back what about a multi-sport stars only and stars and rookies only type product I think you're going to see a lot of that. Yeah. I, I, if you're top, if you're fanatics and you don't do that, I think you're nuts because the, the star dispo- stuff at your disposal and the high end stuff you could do a national treasures, multi-sport or a, a definitive multi-sport, d- depending on what s- company you want to go with, whatever it may be, would, would be absolutely insane. Well, you can even, I mean, you can even do a tops Chrome multi-sport. And, yes, you know, do it something where it's you know Upper Deck has had great success yeah. with that metal the metal champions that's coming out right now. I mean yeah. that that product right there is going through the roof and people are are you know looking at the price tag and saying it's a little high. Well, uh, well, be sorry that you didn't grab it now when it hits you know yeah, almost three grand. When it's three grand a box instead of eleven hundred, but we'll we'll talk about that a little bit later. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, so I'm curious as to what they're you know, what they're going to do. There's a lot of different options that they have, but you're right. They do have to get rid of some of the product lines, but they've got to figure this out fast. If this deal is from what I'm being told, it's probably going to happen either right at the end of the year or at the very beginning of the year was when I was told the announcement would, would, uh, would come. It might come sooner than that, but the release schedules and stuff, especially like that for next year, They've got that stuff's already got to start being done. dumped out now. So, well, but it's already it's already done. They need to figure out the release yeah. schedules for 2024. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And they, they so they need to get on this as soon as possible and figure and figure out what's going on. But 2024, the landscape of cards and the sets that you have, I think, is going to be completely flipped on its head. Like it's going to look so different than your normal 
Prism's coming out, then Optic's coming out, Tops Chrome's coming out. It's not going to be that simple. It's going to no. be wild. It's going to be crazy. And that, as I as I sat back and thought about the Fanatics and the Panini deal the most, that's what I was most curious about is how is this going to play out product-wise? What is this going to look like from a release date perspective? And how many products are they ultimately going to do per sport? Because they've got, if they get Panini, you, you know, you've got a hundred plus products now at your disposal. Yep. No, exactly. And it's a, you know, it's a good intellectual property to have. Um, oh, the 100%. question is, the question is, what do you do with it? And you got to keep all Chronicles out there. around. You got to keep Chronicles around so you can, or at least rename it and do something so you can throw those sets in every once in a while, yeah. just to keep that IP. You know, no, exactly. You, you and to. you know, the reality is, like Flux did not need to be its own set. Recon did not. Recon need to be does not set. need to be its own no. set. No. Um, so we'll they need yeah, to be curious. super short print insert lines in another product. It's very simple. I mean, exactly. It, it, now here's simple. here's my here's my other question is now are they going to flex some of the tops people over to help with the redemption problem and customer service problem yeah yeah that's that that's a really good question uh as michael rubin announced redemptions are done at tops now they will not be putting them out going forward um i believe that starts next year not like the products are already done obviously but Upcoming products will no longer have redemptions in them, which is a a big deal. I mean, I mean that, that's a huge deal for collectors and the value of sealed wax long term. Um, well, but great. then you've also got this the flip side of that. You know what's going to happen if the players don't get their cards back in time? No, that's where I was. That's the thing that I said first immediately yeah. was how how's this going to affect auto lines and who's in the products exactly. Like, like you, the the only thing that I can think of is that if they're confident enough to make that statement, they're confident enough in their deal with the players and the players' associations that they're not going to have that problem because I can't see them doing this without. I mean, someone had to have thought about this. Yeah, I mean, that, there's no way they didn't, and so maybe the deal with the players' association is so good. And their communication is so good that they've told everyone what to expect. I don't know. But to make a statement like that and to do it so quickly, I mean, they've had this stuff for like a year and already, all right, no more redemptions. Boom. Like, that's a big step. That's not something small. Like, we're decreasing, you know, we're adding a new product. This is something huge in the hobby. And if they're truly getting rid of all of it, I don't know. They've got to have some kind of faith in what they their relationship with the players well i mean i got i got faith in nothing right now especially yeah. after what we've seen with some of the autograph stuff that's been coming down lately yeah. and we talked about that in the last you know in the last couple of months yeah. but i i i don't know i mean maybe i have a feeling it's got something to do with the fact that the players union has a stake in product yes. financially yeah. and if there's anybody that can get on these players to get it done it's the union yep but what happens if something doesn't make it you know exactly. what are they like you know a tops chrome auto that's supposed to be in there okay well we don't have redemptions anymore so we can't do those but you know they come back a week after production i mean do exactly they, do they well, hold them held do up put in the mail in, which is they, something that does happen you know held do, up do they put the them in top do they put them in chrome update yeah and, you know as an insert or do they put it in next year's you know well you got it you you if they do this they have to go the upper deck route which is which is something i love which is where Upper Deck, any card that they couldn't get fulfilled for a product of previous years, they'll just put in random boxes. Like in random sets, you will look at an Upper Deck checklist, and at the bottom, 99% of the nicer products have a bunch of different products that would be quote-unquote redemptions, but they were just cards that didn't make the checklist that they planned on having normally of superstars. And and a lot of that... A lot of that you see in SP Authentic, SP yes. Game Used. Yes. Um, you know, those are the two products that have it a lot. The most. Yeah. And there, there's a ton that's in there. But even Leaf, is, Leaf has done that a couple of times, uh-huh. too, where they put have, in the retro stuff. You'd have to go that route. And, but, and, and, and I mean, that can, just like it is done with Upper Deck, if you go that route, let's say something, let's say some Brady autos or something don't make a Topps Chrome release. Well, if you put that out in, 
I don't know, whatever it is, you, you pick one of your products that doesn't have a massive, you know, pull on it, you really want to hype it up, put them in there. Yeah. <laughs> but have have them as surprises like Upper Deck does. They don't tell you ahead of time till the checklist is released of exactly what's in there. Just keep it as a surprise and let people find out. I think that's the the best way you go about it. But they've got to have a lot of faith in this. But I mean, like you said, it, like, I mean, like we're saying, if if they don't get returned in time, which is going to happen, it's going to be interesting to see what they do, especially if it's a big time star. Yeah. And I, you know, only time will tell. And, yep. you know, we'll see if this announcement actually comes to fruition. Cause again, it's all rumors right now. Nobody, there's been no announcement from either company. And no, well, well, Michael Rubin said it on a podcast. So Rubin said on a, uh, on a show this week himself, he said that we are getting, we, we will be announcing that we are getting rid of redemptions. Oh, so, no, no. I'm not talking about the redemption. I'm talking about uh, the, I'm talking about the, the merger between, Oh yes, yeah, that's that's yeah. I mean, no, no, no. That's no. I'm not talking about the redemptions. That's yeah. That's a done deal. However, they figure yeah. out how to do it, and whether or not you know they'll, you know, be successful with it, and what will happen if cards don't get returned in time. That okay. The time will tell. That applies to that as to yeah. what they will do. But yeah. no, you're absolutely right. No, they, Ruben did say they're getting rid of redemptions, and that's the thing. I was, you know, when I said the time will tell originally, I was talking about Fnatic gotcha Fine, yeah Panini. yeah we'll we'll see and like i said guys i mean it, it could be another year before this is announced i think it would be dumb of panini if they waited another year but from what we're hearing they're dotting the i's crossing the t's and it's uh pretty much a done deal but we'll keep you updated as always with any new information uh that comes out about fanatics and panini and drew speaking of panini yes um, mr Rappaport. It, we're debuting a new segment this week. We are. And That's we are really? calling it Scott's Rant of the Week. All so right. here we go. So three years ago, I opened up a box of Obsidian Basketball and was lucky enough to pull an SGA uh, Orange RPA Redemption. Oh, OK. Now, I've been waiting three years for this. None of them. I haven't seen any of them out in the wild. None of them. Orange is numbered to 50. None of them are out in the wild. And Obsidian right. is a sticker auto. Okay. Yes. So now fast forward to earlier this week. One of my grading customers sent me a handful of this year's Obsidian basketball. Yep. SGA autos. Mm-hmm. Stickers. Yeah. Like it should be with Obsidian. Yeah. This year's. They used the stickers they got back from Shea. Yep. On this year's product. What the fuck? Instead of saying, oh, hey, we have all these outstanding redemptions that we just need to slap a sticker on and be able to send them out that people have been waiting three years for. Yeah. The hell were they thinking? I, dude, I, I have no idea. And honestly, the only thing I can think of is that in it, it's, a lazy excuse but their redemption their redemption fulfilling process maybe here in the next month or so they'll finally be redeemed and maybe they you know got them back but the point is they got them back in time to pack out obsidian exactly should, these should have been out eons ago and they you should not ever put any autograph out of the player if you have outstanding autographs of them exactly I, especially it, it's if wrong. it's a sticker Yes, yes. Now, on cards different. Like if you're if you see them at an event, it's different. Like it, yes, on card would be or, different. Maybe they didn't get back the obsidian if it was on card, but he returned the ones from this year. Okay, right. great. Release yes. them. No, yeah. these are fucking stickers. Yes, you take them off a sheet, you put it on the card that people yeah. have been waiting three years for, and it's not right. just me. There's 49 others out there. Not to mention all the ones that are numbered higher, numbered lower. Oh, yeah. You use the stickers to take care of the customers that already have the redemptions in the queue. On a fucking veteran auto line. Like, come on, dude. Well, I mean, he was a rookie when it was a rookie. No, I'm talking about where they're using the stickers. Now they're using the stickers instead of fulfilling these awesome rookie cards that are going to have so much value with stupid freaking veteran autographs. Exactly. Like, what do you now you know why I'm pissed off? Yeah. 
this is this is worthy of the rant this week. No, I because I agree. there is no excuse that Panini should have released the new product with those stickers without fulfilling the ones that from previous years that people have been waiting for. No, it's an eighteen nineteen product. Yes, that I'm waiting on. <laughs> exactly. It is a twenty one twenty two product. That is a what fourth year for him. Yeah, it's going to be, yeah, it'll technically be fourth year. It is a fourth year product. Yeah. So those of us that are waiting, and if you guys are waiting on an SGA Obsidian Redemption as well, or any other, frankly, it doesn't even have to be Obsidian, any other SGA from 1819 or 1920, 2021, that was supposed to be a sticker auto, and you haven't gotten it back yet, I'd be grabbing those pitchforks and torches and... No, heading on down to Texas and having a little fun outside of Panini's head. No, no, this I'm is not, something right not here. advocating violence. I'm just advocating a protest. Yes. No, no, no. I, I yes, that absolutely. Out. Yes, we do not advocate violence in any shape or form, but I 1000% think that this is something where a lot of people, and if you have one or even if you don't and you have a problem with it, speak up to Panini and let them know. Show speak them up to that Panini it matters. How? How social uh, social media anything it doesn't not matter. Respond. I we've we've tried. It's they're they I know. Well, to do a single thing and good luck getting through course. on their phone line because you know what they're down to two customer service. Yes, people. two reps. Two, two reps. customer reps. Yep. And like I said, that's why I mentioned earlier. Hopefully, tops flexes a couple of people down to yeah. take care of those problems at yeah. least temporarily if that buyout happens or more likely when that buyout happens. Yes. Cause there is for the record, it is 1000% confirmed. There are two customer service reps at Panini. <laughs> Look, I get it's hard to hire people, but I mean, that's it's one of not things. hard to hire that job. It's no. not hard to hire that job. You have to have no card knowledge. All you have to do is have to be able to learn a system of looking up information and providing people with a canned response answer that they have already printed out on sheets that they give you. I've done those type of jobs. This is not hard to hire people for. No, not at all. And this is this is one of those things where I mean, look, if I hadn't seen that, you know, those live autos come across my desk, this would I, I wouldn't even be bringing it up. Yeah, but this is a major fail on yes. Panini's part. No, it's a joke. It's it is a joke. An absolute and it, it's joke. Something that they they need to they need to seriously take a look at and fig- and do something about because there's this is it's ridiculous. Yeah, hundred percent. And that's my rant of the week. There you go. Hey, hey, I like this segment. We're keeping that one. <laughs> I, li- I like it when Scott gets fired up, y'all. So yeah, welcome to Scott's rant of the week. That's a stay in. <laughs> so uh, it might not be every week, but, you know, we'll see. Uh, yep. There's probably something to rant about every week, but we'll see. But, yeah, hey, I love it. But uh, moving on now, man, um, I wanted to touch on something that is one of my – it's something that I find incredibly annoying, but at the same time absolutely hilarious to watch, to watch it unfold. But at the same time, it frustrates the pure living shit out of me. And what I'm talking about – And it it really takes form, especially when football season starts and especially after week one. But the overreaction to immediate small sample size, just the overreaction in the hobby to one game for a player or a, a series for a player or a half a season for a player where they write them off at completely. I find it so funny, the posts that are like, ha ha, all you Joe Burrows buyers, you're screwed, whatever. Uh, Apparently, you didn't watch the second half or overtime of that game. A lot of the people talking about Kyler in baseball, Mike Trout. Dude, all the people panic selling at the National, you know, they announce his back problems. And, you know, this past week, seven games in a row hitting home runs. It's it's just so crazy to me the overreactions that people have, and I I know why they do it. Half the people making the comments are just making the comments so when some of these guys eventually fail, they can say "ha ha, I told you so," and ignore the five hundred that they got wrong. But just the overreaction and from in comments and social media cracks me up. But the panic selling is ridiculous. Like, oh, I agree. And people, this is this is the one that got me is people starting to write off 
Trey Lance. Yes. For losing to the Bears. In a, fr- right. in a fucking now, here's, tornado. Well, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Here's my here's mini rant. Mini of the rant week. of the week. The Chicago, not the Bears, because the team has no control over the stadium or the stadium conditions. The city of Chicago, the Chicago Park District, who controls the stadium, and the NFL and NFL Players Association should be ashamed of themselves for yes. letting that game play. The field now it is well known that the field conditions at Soldier Field are atrocious, and that is one of the main reasons that the Bears are looking to build a new stadium out in the suburbs, yeah. which happens to be a mile from my house. So you know I can start charging for parking on game days. Oh yeah. Now the fact that the city allowed that field to get in that bad a condition, the fact that the NFL and the Players Association said, "Oh yeah, that's safe to play." In. Yeah, yeah. They were playing that game. In a grass bottom kiddie pool. Yeah. Now, don't get me wrong. It was really cool to see the slip and slide stuff that they were doing after the. Oh, Justin Fields is is iconic. Exactly. If he if he becomes a great quarterback, that's the intro to everything forever for him. Yes, that is that is going to be an iconic image if the Bears are able to pull something off. Which Vegas wrote him off, by the way. Now, that they are lucky as hell that there weren't more injuries. Yep. On that field than there were. And that both, and you know, and it's like, oh, Trey Lance, he lost to the Bears. He sucked. Well, did you look at what he was playing in? Right. Exactly. You know, but, but like I said, the city should be ashamed of themselves for allowing that field to get into that condition. No, there was no question. Very lucky we didn't have more injuries. And there were injuries in that game. And and it's completely messed up, man. You cannot send people out on a field like that the field like you said there there had already been multiple conversations about problems with that field before yep. you added rain to the mix and sunday to the mix it's not like the field all of a sudden got bad sunday there were complaints about it beforehand no there have been i'm gonna tell you there have been complaints about that field for 20 plus years yeah and they have not done a thing about it and that, and that's what it is um, no, but yeah, writing Trey Lance off because yeah. of that game, absolutely one of a prime example of just ridiculous overreactions in, in this stuff. Guys, relax, let them develop. Like I said, I have a three year rule that most people don't have the patience for, but I just don't hold them for three years. I just buy them when I need to, and they're cheap the two years leading up. But I have a three, you know, my three year rule. Oh, yeah. on, on players and their development and everything. And it's just so funny to me to see the overreactions, but guys calm down. Russell Wilson, guess what? It's going to be pretty fucking good. Hey guys, guess what? Trey Lance, it's going to be pretty fucking good. Um, a lot and of guess what? Guys, Dak Prescott. Yeah. You're kind of right to write him off. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, yes, I agree with that one. Yeah. You can write him off. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, big headline after week one, every year. Well, I guess, hold on. Cowboys I guess have been maybe- eliminated from the playoffs. Yes, and I guess technically with Dak, we should say we should auto pen him off. Yeah, exactly. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Now that that's the one you could write. That's the one you could write off. Broke his thumb again. It, yeah, yeah. It's one of those freak things, but freak things seem to keep happening to him. They do, and I'm not entirely sure what to make of it. But uh, yeah, don't don't write off anybody after week one, especially with all the weird stuff. Russell Wilson just he just went to a new yeah. team. I know exactly. everybody's new around him. Yeah. Um, plus, we, plus with the preseason cut down with yeah. the, with the off season stuff, no more two a days, all that type of stuff. These players are not, I, I've said, I said it a long time ago on this show and on multiple other shows that week one is basically the, first, like, in my opinion, it's I always final treat it as a game. preseason game that counts. Yeah. It's a preseason game that counts because it's the first time that they're actually seeing any type of actual real football. A prime example of that was the our Panthers um, uh, rookie lineman. You could tell he had never seen something like this. And he got bowled over in the first half until he adjusted. And then the second half, Baker actually had two seconds maybe to, to throw a football. You know, that would be fun to watch. But you just don't write these guys off. Give give them some time. Let the season develop. Let them maybe you know play two games. You know three, four, five. I don't know uh, before you just write these guys off forever because it's it's just 
hilarious to me. And I, I guess that'll be my rant of the week. But it's something that frustrates me. But also, I find it incredibly hilarious to just watch the dumb comments that come out about so many good football players. And are this all is these the- guys going to sell for a million dollars? No. But are they a wash and ha ha, you shouldn't have bought their cars, blah, blah, blah? No. No. And this is the complete opposite of panic buying, which we typically yes. see around this year with Michael Porter Jr. Yes, you, you know. see every year with freaking Michael Porter Jr. <laughs> Jesus, you're all, you, you bet you had to. Bring I only him bring up. look, you Drew. I only brought it up because I know because I know it pushes your it buttons. Triggers me, yeah, yeah. It triggers me, yeah. That that MPJ that name triggers me and it makes me want to pull my hair out like I am right now. But yeah, yeah panic buying, just like the panic overreacting, one hundred percent. Well, speaking of not overreacting, yeah, we need money. That's true. We're broke. Yep. Let's go pay some bills. We'll, do we'll it. be right back. And welcome back, everybody, to episode 162 of Let Me Get That Potograph. And now it is time for this segment that is still taking the nation by storm. You know what time it is. It's time for Movers and Shakers. And uh, Scott, I'm going to kick it off this week. Because I got a uh, mover and shaker that, while not a uh, unknown name, he's a name that has been associated with a lot of criticism, not necessarily in the hobby, but it's translated to the hobby and his cards have gone down. But he's been subject to a lot of criticism during the season and throughout the season, but is now showing about that overreaction that we were just talking about to chill out and maybe let people keep playing. And that is, is it, Erling. Is it Holland. Mike Trout? No, <laughs> <laughs> Erling Holland. All right. Holland and his cards have actually gone down. Like for a while there, they've gone down. They're starting to move up again as they should. But he had a huge, huge, huge save. I mean, he literally saved Manchester City just the other day. Um, he's playing lights out right now. World Cup coming up. You know my play and my feelings on soccer, just like everyone else does. I think Erling Holland is an incredible buy, and I think especially his veteran, his veteran stuff, his second year, his third year yep. stuff. In soccer, it's not like football, baseball, basketball. It's different. There's a lot more value in those cards of stars. Virgil van Dijk, for example. Um, you, even his new stuff that comes out, yeah. highly, highly coveted. So you I mean, can look get, at look at Messi and Ronaldo and right, you know, right. It's completely yeah. different. And Holland is one of those people that I think is going to trend is going to be a transcendent player in this game. He's going to be one of the top five in the world one day, in my opinion. And I, so for that no. reason, I've got him as my mover and shaker. I'm going to, I like the pick. I like the fact that you're saying he's a buy right now, which is, which is great. Cause I agree with that hundred percent, but I wouldn't say that he struggled to start the year. Um, no, I mean, but he, he was he's under he's been, a lot of criticism with how he fit in with Manchester city, with, uh, with oh, Man that's, city, if you know, correct. all that. That's correct. And, and they, now, they were putting the blame on him, which is weird. Yes. Um, because yes. he's the one that he's, I mean, how many goals has he scored so far this year? I believe he's leading Man City in, in goals. I believe he oh. is. Uh, now um, I'll pull that up here in a minute. Now, what's really going to be interesting is to see what his stuff is going to sell for when this current year's products come out where he's actually in a Man City uniform for the first time. Yeah, see, um, he, and he's played six matches uh, in 2022 2023 season in the Premier League. So far in six matches, he has 10 goals and one assist. Yeah, there and, you go. And people were giving him shit in the news, and he's been taking criticism for not fitting in in Man City. And it did. There's a reason he's a buy right now, and that had a lot to do with it. A yeah. lot of press was out about him that was negative. And panic selling goes the same when when a bunch of negative press is coming out. Cards aren't going to sell well for that person. That's how this hobby is these days. Yeah, and it you he's a prime example of that. UEFA Champions League, two matches, three goals. I mean, everything he plays in, he shows you he's got the talent. But for some reason, his cards took that dip and they never really shot back up. And yes, he's on the higher end of the spectrum and in, in you know some of this stuff. He's not cheap but for where he should be 
oh, he's cheap. He he's he's yeah, a- but I think I think part of the dip is that he's not going to be playing in the World Cup this year. Yeah, and that's I that's a big negative. Um, no, but, no that doesn't mean that's not you know necessarily on him because yeah. there's you know there's the rest of the team that didn't play up to standard and and qualify. But you know, soccer's not one of those you know games where you have one absolutely amazing player and you can, you know, change things where the rest yes. of the team just kind of, eh. but yeah. not making an appearance in the world cup is a, is a big deal. I think that, that I think was the primary reason that the values have kind of dropped a little bit, but I still think he's a buy. Yes. No, I would no, still, 100% yeah. that, that is the reason for the value uh, drop. And that's why I'm, uh, that's the reason I think he's such a good buy is because everyone's going to be focused on all the people in the world cup. He's going to be going unnoticed and just untalked about while a million other people have the spotlight on them. It, yep. It's the perfect time to buy somebody who could easily end up winning the premier league MVP at the way he's going right now. Yep. Um, and uh, for all those stupid articles, looks like he's fitting in just fine. <laughs> at and least after yeah. these six games. Yeah, no, exactly. But I, like I said, I think it's a good pick. But there, you know, there's a couple things that you know that I kind of see as negatives on it. But uh, but they're not like horrible, right? You know, long term, I think he's a tremendous. No, yeah, I, I, he's title. he's definitely not a short term flip. This is not something where he's going to skyrocket overnight. This is something where I think it's the time to grab him because yep. it's going to go up, and no, especially especially as the premier league, you know, it goes closer towards the end of its season and he gets the, and the focus is back on the premier league from the world cup after that break and everything. So no, exactly. Exactly. All right. Well, mine is one that we don't talk a lot about this sport. Um, okay. Not a huge hobby presence for the sport, but I wanted to make it a point to bring it up because this morning it was mm-hmm. announced that after the labor cup, Roger Federer will be retiring. And, you know, you're talking about the guy who is currently number three in Grand Slam trophies. He has been a tremendous player, you know, tremendous ambassador for the sport. Unfortunately, we haven't seen much of him for the last year because of injuries. But I I think we need to, you know, at least highlight for a second that, you know, his contributions. He does have some cards out there. Yeah, yeah, he's got some awesome net pro cards. Um, Excellent stuff. They, uh... You know, I mean, there's a bunch of signed tennis balls and, and rackets and things like yeah. that out there and different autograph memorabilia that you can get as well. But I think, you know, I mean, you're talking about a guy who's going to be who's a tennis Hall of Famer, no question, who is ending a career at I think he's 41. Yes. Um, which is, I mean, in a lot of sports, that's I mean, it ain't, yeah. Tom, Bra- it ain't Tom Brady old. Right. Uh, yeah. It's not Gordy Howe old. It's not Satchel Page old, but it's still up there in years for a lot of. No, athletes who tend to retire in their 30s. So congratulations to Roger Federer on your retirement yes. and your amazing career. And we look forward to seeing what you're doing next. I like that pick. And I'll tell you one thing, man. Tennis, uh, I actually have purchased in the last, <laughs> it's really funny you brought up Federer because in the last maybe two months, probably bought 80 to 100 net gear tennis rookies from various different tennis players, uh, female and men's, Federer being some of them. Yep. Um because I, I actually like the play on on tennis and on fringe sports and things like that right now. And if you look at the graded copies, there's actually a market. There is a market for this stuff. Um, and uh, gr- good graded stuff goes for insanely good money. So I've actually been play, uh, doing a small tennis play here lately. So it was funny that you brought up Federer. But I think that's a good move because I think it also highlights the entire tennis market i think yeah. it's going to have an effect on the entire tennis market and put some focus on it well and- there was supposed to be this tops chrome tennis product that was supposed yep. to come out this year i i have not heard anything about Me it neither. so i'm not sure if you know fanatics decided to scrap it or whatever the case but i you know when it eventually comes out if it does we got something special that we're gonna do when uh, that happens and i'm not gonna tell you what it is but uh it'll nice. be it'll be a nice surprise it's gonna be a lot of fun and we'll, we'll kind of get that figured out. Speaking of fun. Uh-huh. Oh, my God. Oh, this um, is what I don't know about that. You have no idea what's All right. going on. Okay, All right. Cool. So Paul Pogba, soccer uh-huh. player for Juventus. Yeah. Big name, yeah. 
French national soccer player. He's on the national team. Amazing. Amazing player. His brother, Matthias, mm -hmm. who is older than he is, was just arrested <laughs> for, get this, attempting to blackmail Paul Pogba for $13 million what the fuck? by saying that he was going to spread information about him that he went to a witch doctor to put a <laughs> spell on Kylian Mbappe. <laughs> <laughs> you can't make this shit up. Oh my God. Um, reality is far better than anything that you can oh. think of. So when was the last time you heard somebody accused of going to a witch doctor to put a spell on somebody? Seriously. Yeah. Especially your own family. Like, you would think yeah. you'd have some residual effects on grandma or something. Like, exactly. you know, like... Your, own, your own brother is saying that, you know, <laughs> hey, you're going to go to, you went to a witch doctor to put a spell on your French national team. <laughs> team. <laughs> I, I I don't I don't understand. Now this has actually been playing out for a couple of weeks because the uh there has been an investigation going on for about a month. Oh my god. So, you know, Mbappe came out with a statement and Pogba came out with a statement. Pogba's obviously denying it because I don't see him going to a witch doctor for anything. No. Um and would that I mean if you went to a witch doctor for anything, would that violate your treatment? Because typically your or your contract is typically your team says, Hey, these are the doctors you can go to, or we have the right, team doctor yeah. go, going to a witch doctor. Um, <laughs> you know, hey, look, I get the whole holistic healing and holistic right, medicine yeah, thing, yeah. but this is this is this ridiculous. Is different. This is I, I like I don't even know what to make of this, but I know I read it this morning after it came out that he got arrested, <laughs> and I just couldn't help but laugh my ass off. Oh, so God. I had to bring it up because it's funny. No, that's fucking great. That's too funny. You know, that's uh, I, that. That's it. It's not. You know, it, it's not. Yeah, yeah, no, it's no, not yeah. going to affect Through the hard cards. It's nothing about value. No. no, this is just funny as hell. It's funny. Yeah. So no, that's great, dude. Yeah. That that's absolutely hilarious. Um, I don't know how I missed this, especially since I'm a big Mbappe fan. So I follow like a lot of news. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> I didn't hear there was a spell cast on him apparently, <laughs> but uh, hopefully it doesn't rub off on his cards or anything. You know, or like I said, God forbid, grandma, mom, dad, anyone else in the family. Well, if I mean, if that if it's any indication, it probably hasn't, considering the prices that those Topps Chrome Mbappe autos are going for out of the PSA. Seriously, set. but no, I thought it was hilarious. No, and that's it's one of those things like, look, nobody's talking about this, so let's make people laugh because yeah, funny. no, that that's absolutely hilarious. Uh, but folks, don't go to witch doctors. I think that's what we can all learn from this. Just, just, and if you do, don't try and sue your brother. <laughs> yeah, don't try to blackmail your brother. That's yeah, don't is. don't try and blackmail um, your brother. Yeah, he wanted thirteen million dollars. I know. You know, it's just it's absolutely insane. The thing. Guess he went to the brother. Dane Cook brother school. I guess. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So. Uh, all right. Moving on. What yes. do we got next, Drew? Well, man, before we wrap the show up, uh, there is uh, one other thing I wanted to touch on today, and that is we've got a big release coming out. Well, tomorrow, what since the show's coming yeah. out a uh, day late. Um, but actually, either tomorrow or if you're listening to this on Friday, on Friday. But Topps Chrome Baseball is coming, baby. A big year at Topps Chrome, man. I mean, Topps Chrome is always a big release. Uh, yep. I did hear retail was pushed back a week. Um, so retail, which, which is not unusual. I mean, retail right. and hobby typically come out at, you know, at different times and that's right. But, uh, part. but the retail, the actual retail release date has been pushed back one week from the original, um, schedule. So retail will be a little later than intended, but tops Chrome is coming out. And I mean, just like we were talking about the design of the flagship brand being a big deal, tops Chrome release date for baseball is another one of those mini holidays in the season. Yep. And this year, the set is slightly larger. Really? Uh, typically. I mean, so it used to be a 200 card set. Yes. In 2019, they added four additional cards mm -hmm. because they, I, I, I think the guy, they wanted to get these guys in there, you know, it was Tatis and Alonzo and Vlad jr. And Eloy Jimenez. Yeah. They wanted um, all four of them in the same set. Right. And it was just a late edition. And then it was the issue with them getting not being cut to the right size and a whole that that broke at the national. 
Now we this broke year, that at the national on the main stage. Yeah, that is true. Um, <laughs> so this year it's a 220 card base set, but the base set includes two of the big rookies this year. It includes Wander Franco and O'Neill Cruz. They added an additional five cards that they're calling the extended base short print set that has huh. Bobby Witt Jr., Julio Rodriguez, Spencer Torkelson, Hunter Green, and C.J. Abrams. Now, that's a little bit different yeah. because in 2019, the four additional cards were not short prints. Right, yeah, they were just additional. They were regular cards. Yes, yeah. so they are calling these short prints. All right, And I like that. And I like that. Now, there's also the image variations, which have been standard the last couple of years. But what we have is we have O'Neill Cruz has a variation. Wander Franco has a variation. A bunch of other veterans is a couple of other rookies that probably shouldn't have variations. But this year, they have added a base super short print variation nice. that consists of five cards. And I think all five of these are absolutely worthy of having this done. So two of them are rookies. So it's Wander Franco and O'Neill Cruz. And then Trout. Absolutely and right. Otani. No, not Trout. Wow. You have Otani, Ken Griffey Jr. Killer. And the fifth one. This is one. This is the one I think is the best of all of them. Jackie Robinson. Wow. Card number 42. That's freaking awesome. Now let's see who's card number in the regular checklist. In the regular checklist, Max Muncy is card number 42. But the super short print variations. So it'll be like tops where they flip the vet, like the regular base set where they flip the player for the variation. Exactly. Uh, the and keep the same number. That's that's Correct. brilliant. And Griffey Thank Jr. Griffey Jr. is card number 24. That's killer. So he replaces oh, card number 24. Jackie Robinson replaces card number 42. And then Otani, Wander Franco, and O'Neill Cruz have their normal card number as a super short print. So that's, keep an eye out for those because those are awesome. those are gonna be awesome. And see those um, little those little tweaks are things that can make a product so much better. I, I exactly. love things like that. That's where you can because collectors once once you once you get past the just the look of the product, how a product is built is something that is yep that a collector starts to look at. You know now, what I mean? Oh wait, but it gets better. Okay. So Topps Chrome has always been known for the rookie autos. Yes. All right. This year, there's 47 Chrome Veteran Autos. Ooh, nice. And I'm taking. I'm perusing the checklist now. I don't see anybody that really sticks out too much because obviously the rookies are the highlight. And I'm well. I'm that's looking, what I was gonna say. What level of vet are we talking here? Are well, they worthy and that's, or? And that's the thing. I don't see Mike Trout. I don't see Otani. Juan Soto is in there though. Okay. Another underrated guy who I know you like is Jazz Chisholm. Yes. He's in there. There's some solid pitchers. They put Keston Hire in there for some unknown reason. I don't know why. <laughs> they um, had stickers left. Uh, well, I don't know if these are going to be stickers. No, because the top. Oh, yeah, no, no, power. yeah, yeah. So they, they just uh, ran out of players. <laughs> yeah. And actually, there's an underrated guy in here that I love. And he's underrated probably because he plays with the Royals. That's Nicky Lopez. Um, yeah. He's in there. Nicky Shane Lopez. Bieber is in there. Okay. Uh, the, pres the president of Canada is in there. Huh. Uh, Teoscar Hernandez. Um, let's see. I'm looking at Trevor Rogers. I mean, really good pitcher, but he's still a pitcher. Whit Merrifield's yeah. in there. Xander Bogarts. Now, looking at these vet autos, the only thing I, that's interesting and that's a cool move. Um, but based on the checklist, yeah, kind of meh, but um, the, my question is, how big and how many parallels? Uh, did they do a full rainbow of all of these guys, and are they going to – they're they're obviously going to be taking away one of the rookie autos. Yeah, so yeah. Veteran, veteran Autos looks like a full rainbow. Okay. Um, See, I haven't that... seen – I have not seen pack odds on any of these. There's also a couple of dual rookie autos. Why they chose these – guys as dual autos now these dual autos i'd like this i'd like to think because it's tops chrome it'll be on card but you know sometimes yeah. with tops chrome at bowman things like that the dual autos tend to be stickers yeah gavin sheets and jake Berger on one card from the white Sox, okay. and then josiah gray and jackson core from uh, the nationals and the royals well i mean sheets makes a good burger so i mean i get the first one 
but uh, that is true but it's it's one of those things then there's 87 autos you know the insert autos which happen you know that comes out all the time future stars autos heart of the city autos so all the insert autos um yeah. and then there's a pinstripe autograph set which i don't know what that's going to be okay. now there's also some autograph relics yeah i saw that they were going to have some relics in there um that's and, pretty awesome and aside from Mike Trout and Vlad Jr. and possibly Jordan Alvarez, actually mm-hmm. Buster Buster Posey's in there on okay. that checklist. That would actually be a really cool one to have. The rest of it is just kind of blah on that right. on that checklist. But at two autos a box for Hobby, and I think it's five autos a box for Jumbo. Hobby is coming out the gate at three hundred and fifty bucks. Yeah, no, it's not. It's not bad. It's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. It's it. I mean, it's three hundred fifty bucks now. Granted, I you got it, with the. You, I mean, compared to what it used to be, yeah, of course. I mean, but I thought I thought it was going to be priced a little bit higher. Honestly, well, given given that the rookie, you know, the, the aside from Wander and O'Neill Cruz, the rest of the good rookies that you want out of it are all short prints. Yeah, I would have expected it to be a little bit lower, just because no, the odds yeah. of pulling them are not going to be as as great. Oh no! I would love for it to be lower, and I would ex- I would expect it to be also, but it's not shocking to me that it's that high of a price because it stops Chrome. I don't think they stay there. I think they drop a little bit. Well, I mean, um, next year if if the rookie, if the rookie oh god, next terrible, year I mean, they're gonna have to drop it next year, or they're gonna have to put in some really good veteran autographs because if they're setting the precedent for doing veteran autographs this year. They're going to have to do something good with that next year. We see the O'Connor's at least one. I just hope you're guaranteed at least one rookie auto. Uh, now, now that I know that there's a that big of a veteran autograph presence, I'm hoping it doesn't go to the point that you're paying 350 per per box and you're hitting two vet autos when the whole chase of Chrome outside of the rainbows and the colors were the rookie autos. You know, well they I mean, did that was advertised on the box. They did so. seem to get. They did seem to do a full rainbow for the veteran autos as well. Yeah. Now, my theory in that, though, is the reason that they put in the vet autos is because they printed so much of the product. No, it they is. They needed extra autos to be able to, to exactly. throw in them. So I've got a feeling that at least one is going to be a rookie. I would hope know. so. Yeah, exactly. And I think most boxes, just judging on the checklist, most boxes will probably have two. So good that's, deal. Well, yeah. yes, Tops Chrome Major League Baseball finally out. Finally, finally, finally out. Um, looking forward to it. It does look awesome this year. Uh, it. I, I'm excited for it. I can't wait. Um, you got me a little more excited now after hearing some of the some of the new stuff that they've done. I want to see um, people's reactions with the short prints. I want to see everything like that. Those Hopefully, super short prints are going to go for crazy money. Crazy money. Yeah. And, and I hope they're, I hope they put them in retail too, um, because Topps Chrome has always been such a good retail product as well. Yeah. I hope they put that stuff in retail. And I also think that those vet autos also help retail. I think um, a lot of those bad autos will probably be in retail and you'll be able to get them. But uh, Topps Chrome looks absolutely awesome. Retail guys going to be delayed just a tad, but not too much. Um, get your wallets ready. Yeah. And good, good luck for some supers. But uh, Scott, that, I think uh, I think that's probably a good spot to wrap up this week's show. What do you think? I think we pretty much covered everything this week for next week. Yes. Somebody, please do something crazy. Do something stupid. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I know. Somebody scam nuts. somebody scam somebody out of something big. You right. Know, we haven't yeah, we haven't had a good we haven't had a good scandal in a while. I know. Uh, oh, I'm sure there'll be there'll be plenty um that'll happen probably before. Hopefully nothing this weekend, guys, which uh shout out if you are listening to this and you happen to be at Collecticon. I will be there this weekend in Kansas City. Um, flying out uh, literally in a couple hours after recording the show and uh, we'll be editing the show on the plane but <laughs> but we'll be in kansas city for collecticon this weekend so uh if you're there make sure to hit me up i'll be at the psa booth would love to uh psa for cards not for funko authentication but cards at the gen mint psa booth so make sure to stop by and uh say what's up there but um but yeah do something crazy 
have some fun so we can uh, dissect some absolute madness that's in the hobby, which knowing the hobby, after a slow week, it's normally a crazy busy one. So it'll probably happen this time. All right, let's hope so. Well, guys, before we go, I do want to thank our awesome sponsors, Card Ladder, Show Your Slabs, Slab Strong, Denver Card Shows, and Vanity Slabs. Thank you guys so much. And, of course, iHeartMedia, Spreaker, and Wax Pack. We could not do the show without you guys. Thank you so much. And uh, until next week, you guys know the deal. Keep ripping those packs, pulling those hits. We'll talk to you then. Peace.